Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. With its strange radar dome and lack of weaponry, it's hard to believe that the Boeing E-3 Sentry is perhaps the most important aircraft in the United States military. However, the E-3 is essential to military operations on the ground and in the air. Its powerful rotating radar dome allows it to serve as an Airborne Warning and Control System, or AWACS, to facilitate reconnaissance to weather to communications operations. Since 1977, the E-3 has provided the U.S. with superior defense and offensive capabilities. Despite the fact that it boasts multiple state-of-the-art systems, the E-3 is nonetheless a nearly 40-year-old aircraft. The first models were introduced in the late 70s, while the newest ones entered service in 1991. It should come as no surprise that these aircraft still require a lot of regular maintenance. The Sentry is a mid-sized aircraft that is derived of Boeing's 707 commercial planes. It is 152 feet long and boasts a wingspan of about 145 feet. All while weighing 185,000 pounds. Since AWACS can be scrambled at a moment's notice, it's up to the ground crews to ensure the plane is already ready for flight. This means inspecting the landing gear systems, basic avionics, and fluid levels at the beginning of each day. They must also stock the plane with liquid oxygen so that the crew can breathe at higher altitudes in an emergency. Deeper maintenance is often required on older aircraft, such as replacing broken drain lines and failing electronics. After an E3 lance, ground crews quickly snap into action and begin topping off engine oil, lubricating landing gear, and inspecting engines for potential damage. The E3 is unremarkable in terms of speed, altitude, or maneuverability. It exists solely to monitor an assigned area of the battlefield and to provide information for commanders and air operations in that sector. By taking the radar thousands of feet into the air, it can provide more detailed information on everything. From incoming enemy aircraft to weather conditions without having to worry about obstructions like hills and mountains. This sort of information is invaluable during a battle, but also during routine troop movements.
While virtually any aircraft can provide eyes in the sky to those on the ground, the E3 Sentry can see much further. Again, we're going to press with authenticating. If they tell us not, nah, then we'll back off. Um, make sure that you're posting in the chat when you're pushing the players off. If they're not showing up as fragged, please also add that in the chat. Though the flight crew consists of a commander, pilot, navigator, and flight engineer, it takes between 12 and 20 highly trained mission crew members to monitor and disseminate the large amounts of information provided by the avionics. The radar dome is 30 feet in diameter and 6 feet thick, giving it an effective range of 250 miles. This provides incredible amounts of data every second. And it's up to the mission crew to determine which parts are important and which are not. With all this sophisticated equipment in their hands, the E3 crew is able to provide up to minute information about incoming aircraft. This is not only essential to the completion of the mission, but ensuring as many troops make it home as possible. An E3 mission control is essentially a row of monitors and computers where crew members can pour over readouts and radar displays. In order to ensure they get adequate training with this equipment, the U.S. military has devised special joint exercises, such as Sentry Aloha. Aloha consists of multiple aircraft simulating combat in and around Hawaii. Various planes will play the role of friendly, while others will assume the role of aggressor. It's up to the personnel inside the two E-3s participating in the exercise to identify and classify the different aircraft and guide Allied pilots through the airspace. F-16s, F-18s, and F-22 Raptors from different parts of the country all assumed roles in this particular exercise. Due to the different signatures and capabilities of each aircraft, the E-3 mission crews were required to analyze the radar data to determine who was who carefully. Information constantly flows inside the E-3, and it can sometimes take multiple experts to interpret it accurately. These sorts of live aircraft drills provide invaluable learning opportunities to everyone involved, and simply cannot be replicated in a simulator. In order to perform its job properly, it's imperative that the E3 Sentry be able to remain aloft for extended periods of time. However, most E3s boast a range of around 4,600 miles. This translates into roughly eight hours of flight time. Still, offensive and defensive operations can last much longer than this. Yep. 
which is why it's essential that E3s be able to refuel mid-air. This is accomplished via a flying boom system. A KC-135 Stratotanker will deploy the boom out of the rear of the aircraft and connect it to the E-3's receptacle, which is located above the cockpit. Having two aircraft this large in such close proximity can prove challenging for a number of reasons. But when considering the importance of each plane's job, it's apparent how much care needs to be taken during the process. Fortunately, a KC-135 can not only carry 33,000 gallons of fuel at a time, but also transfer it at a very rapid rate especially when utilizing a flyboom. Most importantly, the E3 can continue monitoring the battlefield situation throughout the refueling process. ensuring that the troops on the ground or planes in the air are not left without valuable information for even a minute. Ground forces and land-based aircraft are not the only ones who rely on eyes in the sky to perform their missions safely and successfully. Aircraft carriers have relied on the Northrop Grumman E-2 Hawkeye to serve as their Airborne Early Warning System, or AEW. Like the E-3, the Hawkeye also boasts a large radar dome that allows it to provide valuable information about ships aircraft, and weather within the vicinity of an operation. It can even detect anti-ship missile attacks with enough time to allow for emergency countermeasures to be deployed. The aircraft's fuselage is heavily based on the old C-2 Greyhound cargo aircraft. And because it is designed to operate from an aircraft carrier, the E-2's wings fold up so it can be stored more easily aboard a fully loaded ship. Though hardly the largest airplane to ever use an aircraft carrier, the E-2 does stretch the limits of the flight deck. At 57 feet long, the plane boasts an 80-foot wingspan in order to generate more lift and allow for longer flying times. Once the E-2 is moved onto the deck, it will begin warming up its turboprop engines while the wings are still folded against the fuselage. At this point, the wings are extended and the nose gear is attached to the Kato Bar launch system. The plane is launched at speeds of over 150 miles per hour. Once in the air, the E-2 can provide detailed weather and defense information for up to six hours at a time.
This data is ultimately crucial to protecting the carrier, its crew, and its aircraft every day. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.